So in this video, I want to continue the discussion of Axie by talking about how to do reads through read bursts. So in Axie, unlike in a conventional memory, you can do reads in groups called bursts. And to get an idea of what the point of bursts is, consider a simple program like this. You know, suppose we want to do this reduce operation where we're setting a variable res to be zero. And then for i from zero to 10, we're setting res to be equal to res plus mem i, or the ith element of mem or the ith int in mem, and we're reading the memory values via axi. So what we want to read in this program, assuming integers are four bytes, is we want to access it in byte locations 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and so on, all the way up to 36. So another way to say this is we want to read 10 contiguous four byte chunks starting from zero. And Axie allows compressed description of these kinds of memory access patterns to the RAM um, using a feature called bursts. And reads in Axie are done through bursts, and writes are also done through bursts. And each of the transfers in a burst is called a beat. So we're basically going to request a group of transfers with a specific byte size and a specific start address. And we're going to get a sequence of output addresses based on the size and the number of chunks that we requested. And each of these transfers that we're going to get back is going to be called a beat or a transfer. And this kind of burst pattern is called an incremental burst. So the Axie has a couple kinds of uh, bursts, incremental, uh, wrapping, and fixed. And <coughs> there may be others, I can't remember off the top of my head, but those are the big three. And in an incremental burst, you're doing this kind of thing where you say, you know, get me this start address, then this start address plus some fixed offset, and then and so on and so on and so on. So how do we describe incremental bursts and in general bursts through the read uh, channels? Well, we've got two channels, right? We've got the read address and the read data. And I've just put these black boxes here because these are really groups of ports, right? So to, uh, well, describe it, instead of just putting in a single address, we're going to put in a start address, the number of transfers or beats that we want, the number of bytes per transfer, and the burst type. And in our case, in this example, we're going to do an incremental burst. So basically reading a contiguous region of memory uh, one transfer at a time. And then on the read data, we're going to get out chunks of data based on uh, what we requested in the read address port, ports. So just to give ourselves some more space to describe the ports, let's split these guys up a little bit. Um, and so first, Axie includes on all of its channels uh, ready and valid signals. So on the read address channel, the ready and valid signals are AR ready and AR valid. On the read data channel, it's R ready and R valid. And this R is just a prefix and these ARs are just a prefix. And they're just used to create unique names and group things uh, on different channels. But basically the memory is going to set AR ready to be one when it's ready to receive a new burst. The user is going to set AR valid to be one when they're ready to issue a new burst. When they're both one, it's going to be understood in this handshake that a new burst is starting and the memory is going to start servicing this burst. And then when we're streaming out chunks of data, when the receiver of the data is ready to receive data, it's going to set R ready to be one. When a chunk is ready uh, to be sent out of the memory, the memory is going to set R valid to be one. When R ready and R valid are both one, again, it's going to be assumed in the handshake that the chunk has sort of been acknowledged and the memory is going to move on to servicing the next chunk in uh, the active burst or it's going to finish if that was the last one. So let's just look at the actual field. So there's actually a ton of fields um, on the address channel, but most of them are related to things like quality of service or there are optional fields or they're related to caching and protections that you might not even see. So let's just stick with the basic ones. And those are AR burst, AR adder, AR len, and AR size. And again, notice this AR prefix. It's just a prefix to indicate that all of these fields are on the read address channel. And so the burst indicates what type of burst we're doing. So in our example, we'd indicate an incremental burst, which I think is code zero, but I could be wrong. Uh, either way, there's just a, this is a couple bit bus going in that indicates which of the different burst types you want to do. This is the start address of the burst. Um, and then length is the number of transfers in the burst uh, minus one. So if you put in zero, um, it'll actually do a burst of length one. Um, and then, but it's basically just the number of transfers you want to do. Then AR size indicates how many bytes are in each transfer. And then, of course, you've got the handshake signals uh, ready and valid. And AR size is a little bit tricky, right? Because you can't just put in any size you want. You can't put in a size larger than the uh, you know, output data bus, for example. Um, but we can get into the details of that in a later video where you can look in the Axie spec. 
And then on the output side, there's three important fields. Um, there's our data, our response, and our last. Our data contains the actual data that you requested. So, um, you know, if you request, uh, you have a 32-bit data bus and you request um, 10 4-byte transfers starting at address 0, our data is going to carry in the first output um, the, the bytes 0, 1, 2, 3, then 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Then our response is a field that indicates whether the read actually succeeded or not. So remember from the last video that uh, in Axie, reads and writes can fail. So our response is, I believe it's a two-bit field that contains some different uh, kinds of error codes that indicate whether the burst uh, or whether this transfer actually happened successfully and whether the state is valid or not. Um, or whether, I shouldn't say it's valid because that's confusing, but whether this read actually succeeded and if it failed, you know, why it might have failed. And then our last is a flag that indicates whether the data that's currently coming out is the last piece of data in a given burst. So those are the basic fields that you're going to see um, in Axie read bursts. And actually, the write bursts are pretty similar, though, of course, you're doing writes rather than reads. So next time, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about the read address and data ports behavior and what they actually look like um, in Axie handshakes. But it should be pretty straightforward to see that this is really just um, an interface that makes it easy to specify some common types of memory accesses, like accesses to long contiguous sequences of memory, and that then streams out the results one at a time. And that's really what a read burst is. And the rest, all the extra fields and the details of timing, uh, really are just details. And we'll talk about some of those next time.